Vinu or, or Maruti or, or Shilpi and then you, all of us know things like you know your, your uh, fiction stories, you have uh, of course Patiban Kanava, you have Pony and Selva. So all these vivid images that are in our mind about our culture comes from several artists who have been doing this work but on a commercial basis. Right? So they are hired to paint. They paint for temporary purpose, meaning a magazine survives a week or a month at best. A poster survives for the duration of the film or a calendar survives for one year. Once that is done, you're going to throw it. You get, you'll probably have the same Vinayaka calendar every year from the same store, but every year you throw this and get a new one out. So we're not uh, collecting, keeping or studying on long, uh, long term basis the artistic output of what we call commercial artists. They refer to as commercial artists, right? And that's a distinction. You know, we were discussing a few days ago why we're we calling this commercial artists and who are fine artists. The difference purely is a commercial artist is a good artist who you tell him do this, he will do it for you. A fine artist says, you can't tell me what to do, but you have to pay me money for what I do. So, you know, it's just the difference between what you can tell somebody and you know, there are personal choices, I suppose, we're not getting into that. But the exhibition focuses on about a hundred years of commercial art from Madras. The location pretty much is Broadway. If you go to Broadway and if you understand where Olympic Cards is and that whole street, this is where the story has happened for a hundred years repeatedly and still continues to take place over there. Of course, Photoshop and, and, and the computer age came in and ended the handmade part of uh, this process. Today, of course, archiving design is a digital process. We come all the way to NFTs, which is basically commercial art being put in a unique form. And that's why we say NFTs are more accessible. It is more open to larger groups of people. But um, it is this larger group of people that we actually are trying to study. So to give you a quick uh, run through of what these 100 years look like, if we all go back to our oldest form of art that we know from this region and to very broadly uh, put it together, it's the Tanjore school or the Tanjore paintings that we all know, we have seen. It is the most commercial uh, art form that is very handmade, that, that requires a little bit of time. So as societies grew, as cities grew, as uh, demand grew, technology was invented to be able to replicate and mass produce things. So the first thing that came into the art world was printing, right? Whether it was the first making uh, books uh, in, in terms of printing with text or printing with lithographs which came about in this city in the late 1800s. This is a very special example um, and, and the reason why it's a fantastic example on the surface it's a Ramal Patabhishekam that everybody can look at. It looks like a typical Tanjore painting. But the point here is there's a, a line of text which we never ever see. It's very rare to find because it gets cut off or destroyed. But it clearly says if you want to buy this painting come to address number so and so in Auckland's Broadway and from this so and so Chetty shop and you can buy this. Right? So basically what they figured out is they were lithographically printing the black and white paper and then hand coloring it. So it's like a shortcut, quick production of tattoo paintings. It had the same desired effect, but it could probably buy for at that time say three rupees or four rupees, something unheard, right? So it is far cheaper than having to buy an actual tattoo painting. Then lithography, of course, comes to the format that we all know of. This is not Ravi Varma, but Ravi Varma popularized it. Like he also, in that sense, while he made paintings that we consider, you know, so valuable museum quality today, he became popular for his commercial art, which are the lithographs that he did. He was able to mass produce them and kind of make sure that every household in India had one, which is why when you say who is an Indian artist, you either say Ravi Varma or who's any other guys who had mass production. So. From here, you had over the many years, you had people move into, this is reverse class painting from the 1950s or so, where they took the style of Tanjore paintings and they moved it beyond the uh, scope of a Tanjore painting into other narratives. So here you have Meenakshi, you have Mandal. This then combines pure poster painting, which is probably like a magazine style. So this is a full evolution of the commercial side of the traditional art forms. Everything over there, which I won't go to, but you, you can go and look. But those, um, there are about nine pictures there, which are original calendar paintings. And I'm saying calendar paintings, so they were used for purpose of calendars, or they were used for magazine covers. 
but those that's how the artist would paint them and then you would see some which have uh, graphic on top which means there is text on top so they would do the text cut it out stick it there and then that gets converted into the calendars or the magazines that you see and typically so we do have about 12 calendars also on display you would go to the shop in broadway and he'll show you saying i have all these artworks you choose these artworks and I'll add the calendar at the bottom for you. And then I'll add your company name. So you have Spink and so on and so forth who have uh, you know, their names. And then you'd order, say, I want thousand of these. They'll print it for you. They would own the copyright of the original artwork from the artist. So they would reproduce these. And I suppose there was a mechanism in which the artist would make some money, the printer would make some money, and then you're, you, know, you have these advertising um, advertisements going around every house. Then you come to another form of commercial art which also came in very early, around the 1850s. Photography came to Madras very early, like the camera, the com professional commercial camera was invented in the in 1850 in, in, in Europe. By 1853, 1854 it's already here in uh, Chennai. And Alexander Hunter who set up the college, uh, the fine art college, also set up the Photographic Society of Madras in 1857. So, and, and camera, the camera photography, unlike most other fine art, is usable by anybody. You can be a scientist, a lawyer or whatever, you know how to use a camera. So, photographs became very popular and the commercial usage of these photographs and the photography was to replicate yourself. Earlier on you had to get an artist, pose for them, sit, do the portrait painting, it would take many sittings, it would take you almost a month to get your own portrait done. And it was very expensive because you'd have to obviously look at guys like Ravi Yorma doing portraits or younger artists doing it but it would still take a lot of time. So the camera came in and gave the ability to do portraits very fast, however the technology was neither color neither was it allowing you to do anything large. So when people wanted enlargements, please avoid these two, these are actually drawings. We're showing them, uh, showing you drawings here to show how uh, people were drawing at that quality, but there was also photographs uh, which looked similar because they would take the enlargements and they would hand paint them. So, uh, so these two pictures will show you um, exactly what the negatives looked like. So this was the size of one glass negative and this was the size of another glass negative. That was a standard that was available for photo, for the camera. If you did a contact print, you would get this size. If you enlarge them, meaning if you came back and wanted to make the picture bigger, they would turn out to be like this, but they would blur. So artists were used in the studios to touch up these paintings, give it a color background. If the obviously this lady is in a beautiful, almost European uh, setting, right, in the background. And, and there, of course, uh, the sari has been highlighted, the jewelry has been drawn in, uh, the eyes are made sharper, similarly with these two portraits as well. So photography also was a commercial art form that, again, made art accessible to the masses. It allowed uh, people now, of course, everybody has a camera on their phone and, and, and the, the image making has become something that is extremely mass to the point where, you know, there's Instagram and Facebook and it's all driven by images, right? So. Um, so now, all of this traditional art form, painting, drawing, photography, got combined to this particular, the, the, the cinema industry maximized this commercial art form, right? So here what we have are four images from the same movie. Uh, it's from a film, Pandian, which of course starring, if you don't know who he is, then you're in, you know, not even from this universe. So, um, so Clearly they use an artist to draw a concept. They've used a picture, random picture of Kushbu because obviously there would have been a lot of photos of her. Uh, drawn a certain look for Rajnika, combined it, created the font, created the uh, you know the the, the, the the logo for the movie, and then this would have been approved by the producer and he'd say, okay, sure, and then they would shoot these pictures. Like or the hand-painted uh, still of Rajni who kind of is walking or running. The final portion of the film actually has a photograph. So this would have been the concept and then from here they would have made him pose that way or it would have been part of the scene and then they make the poster, uh, movie poster from that. Similarly, you can see other actresses like Kia Vijaya, correct me if I'm wrong, she's been used to be uh, made into a greeting card actually. So that was the original for then you could buy greeting cards with her face on it 
and then send it out for Pongal or Diwali or whatever. But clearly she was not dressed that way or wearing two you know, ponytails and all that. So that's all painted. If you go closely, you can, you can distinguish between what is the photograph and how much of it has been painted over. So, and then finally at the end, what we have done is a big jump. But that is where it's almost the end of the handmade graphic in this city. So when digital printing came in, when your flex banners, again brought in by the film industry, right? Because flex printing and, and Vinay comes in because uh, film companies want to have a more lifelike and quickly produced posters, quickly produced holdings. Vinay came into Chennai and at that point laser cutters did not come in along with it. So people were hand cutting and making those pictures for, you know, out of vinyl. They're all handmade, they're not laser cut and composed. They are individually hand cut and then you put them on autos and uh, trucks and cars or whatever. So those were made in the late 2000, early 2000s in Chindadri Pet, which was the sticker shop. It still is the sticker shop central for uh, Chennai, but all the stickers today are printed or laser cut or readily available. This is handmade, so there are layer upon layer of vinyl cut by hand, it requires a phenomenal amount of artistic skill to work in reverse. They actually are cutting out the negative. They're not cutting out the positive. What we are seeing is the positive. You're seeing Rajnikanth and Vijay and Hajit and all that. But when the vinyl is cut, it's cut in the negative. And then that entire wall there, bit of a jump, but there are some lithographs. They would have been printed as a lithograph, but they are magazine illustrations by D.P. Roy Chowdhury. Now, D.P. Roy Chowdhury, of course, is was the principal of the Government Arts College, right? So he is the opposite world. He is the fine artist. He is the guy who creates all the artists that uh, we consider to be modern masters in the city. But he also was painting, uh, drawing cartoons for magazines for a magazine called Swatantra in the 40s. Uh, his sense of uh, clearly the 40s sense of humor is a different level. Uh, there, there is a political correctness of different. Uh, uh, categories going on over there but you know to show how even a fine artist was looking at a commercial output you know showing his work and becoming popular that way so Roy Chaudhary was famous enough that they said sure why don't they stay in a magazine and then you have all the illustrations there by artists like Maniam, uh, Vinu who have done magazine covers uh, and we also have original magazines displayed there uh, some of the earliest Ananda Bigadan uh, Deepavali Malars uh, from the 30s and 40s uh, just to show that those are all filled with you know works of these commercial artists like you couldn't get so many books with fine artists like if you took all the fine artists of Madras they'd be like about 40 books but every single magazine even today has tons and tons of illustration drawing and painting by artists who we just consider to be commercial so hopefully through this show what we're trying to address is they're all visual they're all aesthetic they all contribute to the same culture that we are all living in so let's try to look at the visuals of the city a little differently so when you go out today maybe you look at all your cutouts different you look at now you know we have street art in the city so you have to even consider where that is coming from how that is going to impact what we look at your signboards on shops your posters your even i mean there's a whole bunch of lungi brands there so you'll understand you know how that was designed is not you know we think of you know random lungi brands and pd labels and matchbox labels but they were all designed and they do have a lot of artistic input we know we have advertisers here designers who understand how difficult it is to deal with a client and get an approval you know so so it's, it's equally uh, hard work and yeah hopefully now we'll create some better understanding appreciation of uh, a completely different school of art which you know was separate but hopefully with this show we can bring together so that's that's enough of me talking but yeah thank you all for coming again and uh, lots of wine Enjoy.